Greetings. I'm Richard Rutledge, and I'm here to present Extending CLI to support behavioral regression testing. When updating software, it's important to make sure not only that the modified code behaves as intended, but also that the unchanged code is not adversely affected by the modifications. This is called regression testing. A regression test case that successfully completes on the previous version but fails on the update indicates a behavioral divergence between versions. When this divergence is unexpected, the test case has revealed a regression error. The secret to regression error-free software is therefore to develop a comprehensive regression test suite. However, writing good regression tests is both hard and time-consuming. Therefore, in practice, Regression test suites often focus on core behavior or provide haphazard coverage. Because accurate oracles are also hard and time-consuming to build, over-approximated oracles are common, which can result in incorrectly validating critical behavior. For example, an oracle that only checks for crashes would pass an incorrectly calculated result. Regression suites may even be skipped entirely. Automated input generation techniques can automatically produce a large body of test inputs, but a regression test suite also requires a suitable oracle. Compounding this problem, current trends towards continuous integration compress the life cycle with ever shorter intervals between releases. Intuitively, coupling input generation for functions in a local neighborhood of the changed code with the original program as an oracle allows for a systematic exploration of changed program behavior. This approach thoroughly covers code differences, does not need oracles, and is fast enough for use in a continuous integration setting. Here we present an overview of our tool for behavioral regression testing, Berkeley. Its only inputs are the original and updated versions of the program, P0 and P1. It proceeds in four phases. Change identification statically analyzes P0 and P1 to select function entry points for input generation and identify changed program statements. Input generation generates inputs to both P0 and P1 at the selected entry points, persisting those that exercise changed code. Behavioral comparison concretely executes inputs on both P0 and P1 while comparing state at checkpoints and emitting a log of all differences found. Difference analysis groups, orders, and ranks the difference log for the developer consumption. Next, we'll walk through an application of Berkeley to a hypothetical program P. On the left, we have the original program P0, and on the right, the modified program P1. The box and arrow drawings represent their respective call graphs, with boxes depicting the program's functions. For this example, the call graph has not changed. The first step in change identification is to identify all modified functions, as well as those added in P1 and removed from P0. In this example, only compress, block, and hash have been modified. Entry points are functions in both P0 and P1 with identical signatures, that is, function name, arguments, and return type, that reach changed code in either version. Additionally, let's assume that hash's signature has been modified by changing an argument type. Finally, the selected entry points are those that exist in both versions, have the same signature, and reach a changed, added, or deleted function. Continuing with our example, these are main, compress, and block. During input generation, the input domain is the subset of program state for which values are generated. For each entry point, the input domain includes the function's parameters as well as the set of in common global variables, that is, variables defined with the same type in both program versions. As constructed, both the entry points and respective input domains are defined in both versions and inputs generated for either can be replayed on the other. For input generation, Berkeley uses under-constrained symbolic execution with unconstrained inputs and lazy initialization to find inputs systematically exercising program paths. This phase is performed on both P0 and P1. But we only want inputs that execute changed code. 
On the left, we show a hypothetical control flow graph for block. The ovals represent basic blocks and arrows branches. For our example, let's assume only basic block 4 has changed. During symbolic execution, upon completion of an entry point path, only those path states executing a changed basic block are persisted as test inputs. The rest are discarded. Prior phases have produced a set of in common entry points and test inputs for P0 and P1. Now, a behavior comparison will concretely execute each test on both P0 and P1 using the same symbolic ex executor, but with only concrete values injected from the test input. During concrete execution, the executor maintains a sequence of address based snapshots taken upon return from in common functions. In the shown diagram, while executing an input to block, the executor would take snapshots upon each return from the functions underlined in green. Snapshots are aligned into P0 and P1 pairs by returning function. For each pair, it then compares abnormal termination, returning function value, in common global variables, and output streams such as standard out and standard error. Individual comparisons are LLVM type aware. Primitive types are value compared, arrays are iteratively compared, structures are recursively compared, and pointers are dereference compared. Each difference found is written to a difference log. The resulting law, raw difference log is not suitable for direct consumption. It contains many redundancies and dependent differences. The last Berkeley phase, difference analysis, reduces the log to a re report for developer review. First, multiple tests may trigger the same behavior, so it groups differences by program element to manage these redundancies. It then uses co-occurrence to identify dependent differences. The final step of this phase ranks the differences by heuristic to emphasize the unintentional ones. The intuition is that differences detected far from the program change are more likely to be unintentional. Therefore, we rank differences by the maximum distance at detection from change code on the call graph. We implemented Berkeley program analysis and program differencing as Clang and LLVM passes. The Berkeley under constrained symbolic executor was forked from CLI 1.3. We asked the following three research questions. Can Berkeley detect and effectively rank regressions? How do Berkeley's over approximating results compare to a similar tool's under approximating results? And how does Berkeley perform on mostly refactored code? Due to time constraints, we're only going to look at uh, RQs 1 and 2 in this presentation. To answer RQ1, we selected benchmarks from the Core Bench Core Utils Find and Grep sections. For evaluation only, we implemented bug oracles local to the defect sites to precisely signal when the Pacific a benchmark's bug will manifest. The bug oracles were only used during the evaluation of behavior comparison to prevent additional control flow from influencing input generation. For RQ2, we used the core utils section from CoreBench, for which we had shadow pu published results. The table on the right shows the programs within the benchmarks, their CoreBench identifiers, and numbers of lines of code. The table shows the results for each one of the benchmarks, where each benchmark is a regression. To answer RQs 1 and 2, we're going to focus on the rank and compare columns. Other details are described in a technical report. For RQ1, as you can see in the rank column, Berkeley automatically identified 25 of 43 regressions, ranking them in the top three, while reporting higher ranked false positives in only 18 of 43 cases, confirming that Berkeley can detect and effectively rank regressions. Shadow identified eight of the core util regressions as compared to Berkeley's identification of 14. Of course, the additional detections came at the cost of potential infeasible differences. 
We now demonstrate vertically by applying the tool to the core bench regression 22 X prayer. The demo will run in real time to show the efficiency of the technique. The demo is CLI based, so it is mainly meant to see an instance of the tool running and get an idea of the different phases. Run prep is a driver script that includes the change identification phase. It takes the original and modified versions of Expert, Expert as LLVM bit code modules, links both with the required CLI runtime, and emits a file containing a list of entry points and instruction differences. Run iGen is a driver script that performs the input generation phase. It generates inputs for both program versions from the prior identified entry points. As an optimization, this phase can specify the maximum call graph distance of an entry point from changed code. This controls the size of the neighborhood around the changed code explored and greatly enhances the scalability of the tool. Here, and for all of our experiments, under constrained symbolic execution runs for a maximum of 60 seconds per entry point. As such, the time required to generate inputs depends upon the size of the changed code rather than the size of the subject program. For this benchmark, input generation only requires a bit more than one minute. Also, since input generation at each entry point is completely independent, each task runs in parallel. Run ICMP is a driver script that performs the behavioral comparison phase and emits a log of all detected differences. Finally, Report ICMP results is a Python script that performs the difference analysis. It reports finding one difference in the first field of the structure pointed to by two arith's output parameter v, corresponding to the i field of the value structure. This concludes our demonstration, and I would be delighted to take questions.